Rakadosh, Boker Or, Mesech and Azid, Daf Yudal Al Munal 14A1. If you remember yesterday, we were speaking about the entire concept of that we had a doubt to do with an Nizirut Muetet of 30 days, that since it was only going to be 10 days left. You remember basically the guy came and he said that he was going to do a 100 day Nizirut. Okay, but it was only going to start. Uh, no, sorry, the 100 days was going to start now. The 100 days was going to start now. But in 20 days, he was going to do an Nizirut of 30 days. So therefore, we said over there that for sure, what he could do is he starts the, the 20 of the 100, he makes a Pasek, he does the 30, and then he continues afterwards. So we asked the question, why don't we do the same thing with two Nizirutz of 30 days? So he said, no, because if you did two Nizirutz of 30 days, you start today, you're going to do today 20 days, stop, do a 30, which is one, one set, and then you're going to do only 10. 10 is not Hashuv. 10 is nothing. Right? 10 days of Nizirut is nothing. So therefore, Therefore, we said over there that we thought that that's why. What, what does he do? Just one minute at the beginning. If you're going to tell me it's a small nizirut of 30 days, Kevin Dasarayomin who detrain, how many is left over? One more time. You started today, right? The, the 30. After 20, you have to make a pasek, right? And then you do the 30 of those 30. How much is left? 10 days. So you would not have this 10 to help you for anything. However, though, at the end, when you have 100 days, for sure you have 80 days left over. So for sure it would help. Oh Lord, maybe I say that there's no difference between the 80 or the 10. At the end of the day, that it has to be straight, right? Then from the beginning until the end. <coughs> and that's what the Gemara is asking, okay? So obviously there's a much bigger Chidush by mentioning the 100 days, because if you would say, Be'emet, it was only going to be the 30 days, Be'emet, there's only 10 days left, it wouldn't help. Okay? This is where we're starting today. Now, if you're going to tell me now, right now, that it's going to be Chal the Nisirut, Amar Hareni Nazir Le'achar Esrim Yom. If a person comes and he says, I'm going to become a Nazir after 20 days, Ume'achshav Nazir Olam, but from now, it's going to become a Nazir Olam. Yenusur, one more time. In 30 days, uh, sorry, in 20 days, it becomes a regular Nazir. But from now, it becomes a Nazir Olam. Ma'u, what's halacha? Michai Lele, is it miyad chal the Nazirut? And then after the 20 days, he makes a sek And he does like, you know, the regular 30 days. And then he cuts his hair and all these things. Or no, or maybe no. Do I say that at the end of the day, it's only going to be when he finishes the Stam Nazirut, then it's going to start the Nazirut. So, if you're going to tell me now, hacha, kevin devshal lishtu yechayla, when it's a Nazir Olam, you could always ask to annul the Nazir Olam. Meaning, to, to become a Nazir Olam is very powerful. So you could do Hatarat Nedarim, you could go to the rabbis, and then you could annul it. So maybe I would say that since you could annul it, maybe we made it is Chal. So Amar, what happens if he says, Are Nazir Shimshon? Nazir Shimshon, you can never ask on Nazir Uto. Meaning, Nazir Shimshon, you can never, you can never annul it. You're gone. Right? That means once it's Shimshon, Nazir Shimshon, it's completely different. So here you cannot ask about it. So do we say that it's going to be chal or not going to be chal? So Amar, so he said, right, another question. Again, these are all questions that we didn't answer yet. Okay, they're all just different parts of the questions. Okay, so one more time. We asked about whether it's going to be an izirut muetet or not, meaning 30 and 30, but the, 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 the first group of 30 is only going to start after 20 days. Then we said about Right? If a person says that he's going to become a Nazir after 20 days, but now Nazir Olam, then we said, one second, but Nazir Olam, you could actually be a it. Right? What about Nazir Shimshon? Meaning he's going to become a Nazir after 20 days, and from today he's going to become a Nazir Shimshon. You could annul, annul it. Another question. Amar adar mai. If a person comes and he says that he's going to accept upon himself like Moshe Rabbeinu on the 7th of Adar. Now we know that 7th of Adar is what? When he was born and, and when he was niftar. So Mina Stam, when he was niftar, right, they did like a nizirut because it's like a person that has sad, he's suffering. Now, if it's going to be the birth, it's a simcha. So what does that mean then? Is the kavanah to the kavanah to the tidav Moshe Rabbeinu and he wants to accept upon himself nizirut or the kavanah is to the birth and has nothing to do with nizirut. It's actually something of simcha. They want to understand the question. Yeah. So says the Gemara, we could at least answer the first one. 
Hareni nazil achar esim yom me'achshav me'ayom. The case that we said that if it's going to become a nazil after 20 days, and from today, 100 days, umone esrim, and then you're going to count 20 days, and then afterwards you're going to count the 30 days. And then afterwards you're going to count the 80 days in order to be mashrim the nazirut at the beginning. So therefore you see from here that here it's written with furash to do with the first case. So the first ever case that we mentioned, which was basically again, I'm going to become a Nazir in 20 days. Then he's going to become a Nazir from today for 100 days. It's answered. We have an answer to that one. Okay? Make sense until here? Nitma bime beno. If a nitma, if the Nazir becomes tamemet during the Nazirut of his son, right, which is basically coming and making a hefsek between the two different uh, Naziruts. So here again, we're talking about the person accepted upon himself that, that if he has a boy, he will become a Nazir. And he also accepted upon himself Nazirut Stam. Now he starts counting his own Nazirut Stam. He didn't finish and all of a sudden he had a boy. So the question is, what happens now? Nitzma, if he became Tamemet, right? Bimen the Nazirut of his son. Rabbi Yochanan Amar, Rabbi Yochanan says, Soter, he's going to be Soter even his own Nazirut. Okay? <coughs> That means not only is he soter the nizirut of his son, he's soter his own nizirut. You remember the case was, is that a person comes and he says he's going to become a nazir when he has a boy. And then all of a sudden he says he's also going to become a nazir stam. Now he still didn't have a boy, so he starts counting his nizirut, and all of a sudden he has a boy. So therefore we said we make a pasek, he starts counting the nizirut of his son, and then he continues his own nizirut. Now what happens is, is that in the middle of his nizirut of his son, he became tameh. So not only is he soter, soter means he destroys the nizirut for his son, but it also destroys his own personal nizirut. So he has to start from zero on both counts. And so on both counts, on the count. He would be able to bring the korban because of the... So Rabbi Yochanan says it's soter everything. And Rashaki says it's not going to be soter, right, what he counted. Okay, that means it's only going to be soter, the nizirut of his son, but not the previous nizirut. Rabbi Yochanan says soter, chad al-nizirut arichtayi, because it's considered like one nizirut. Rabbi Shaki says it's not going to be soter, nizirut didei lechu v'divrei lechu. According to Rabbi Shaki, it's like considered two separate niziruts. So therefore, even though he's canceling his son's nizirut, his nizirut was still okay. It's like separate entities, you understand? Basically, do I say that you have to put the count on to zero on both because it's like one entity? Or do you say it's two separate entities? So fine, so you cancel this one, but you still have on the other one. You done it, the 14b. Nitma bime tzara'ato. What happens now if a person becomes tameh, right? The nazir, during the times of his tzara'at. Rabbi Yochanan Amar Soter, Shaki Shaman Soter. Again, we're going to see the same machloke. Rabbi Yochanan says Soter dal Nazirut Kai. He's every other day. He's a Nazir. The Shaki says it's not going to be Soter because Saraat is one thing and Nazirut is another thing. What does that mean? The Yemet Tumat of Saraat is separate than the Yemen Nazirut. Each one is separate. So, for since the days of Saraat are not helping for the days of the Nazirut, it's not considered right days of Nazirut. And therefore, even though he became Tamimet now, he's still going to be okay. So they basically, again, one more time, this is a machlok between Rabbi Yochanan and Shakish. Do I look at it as one package? So the second that I pop the bubble, the entire bubble popped. Or do I look at it as two bubbles? Right? I pop one, the other one's still okay. So same thing. I got rid of one, fine. So that one, you're right. I have to start again. But the other one is still okay. So that's Shita Tresh Lakish. Utsricha, now we need both cases. The case of the Tzara'at and the case of becoming Tameh during the time of the sons, Nezirut. Why? If we mention the first machloket to do the nizirut of his son that made a pasek in his own nizirut, because it's all one nizirut. Meaning one of them was stam nizirut, another one was nizirut of his son. But it's nizirut, it's the same entity. It's the same name. Here though, in our case of the tzara'at and nizirut, I would say, maybe Rabbi Yochanan admits to Rishakish that it's two separate names. One name is Sara'at and one name is Nizirut. So maybe Rabbi Yochanan agrees to Rashakish, and that's why we needed to bring down the Makhloket. Rav Yitmar Baha'if, it was only mentioned in this case of the Tzara'at Lechud and the Nizirut Lechud. Here is where Rashakish says that it's going to be one, two separate entities. 
But if I only had the first case, meaning if I didn't bring down the first case, maybe I would say that a Shakisha agrees to Rabbi Yochanan that since it's all the same Nazirut, Bemet, it's going to be the same problem. So Tzicha, that's why we need both cases in the Machloket to show you that they both argue in both separate cases. Okay? Very good. Next. Nitma biyom gidul se'at. What happens right now is that like as follows. We know that the Nasir, he does not do the Tiglachat when he finishes unless he has on his head gidul se'ar of minimum of 30 days. Okay, so therefore if there was any reason that within the 30 days he had to come and he had to, to cut off his hair, right? Whether it was because, for example, let's say bandits came and they forced him to cut his hair, right? Or whatever it is. So he has to actually wait for 30 days and then he could do the Tiglachat. Okay, so that, that extra time is called Yom Gidul Se'ar, the day of the growing of the hair. Because one more time, growing of the hair is maximum, is minimum 30 days. There's no such thing as less than that. Okay? So if it's going to be Nitma, Yom Gidul Se'ar, Rav says that it's not going to be Soter. Even according to Rabbi Yochanan, he says usually it is going to be Soter. Hanemi Leomi from the middle of Nezirut. Meaning that here, you're not in the middle of Nizirut. You finished your Nizirut. But here, you just have to wait for Gidul Se'ar because of a technical issue. That you needed 30 days of cutting your hair. In the middle of the Nizirut, bandits came and they forced the guy to shave his head off. Right? His hair off. So therefore, he didn't have hair. So he has to wait for 30 days. But it's not that he's in the middle of Nizirut. So therefore, even Rabbi Yochanan is going to agree that it's going to be okay. Moshimul Aman, Moshimul says, Soter, it is going to be Soter. Right? Even according to the Shakish, he says it's not going to be Soter. There it's two different Nizirutz. Here it's all one Nizirut. It's all one. So again, we get, we have two sides of the same coin. Okay? That means each one is looking completely different opposites. Okay? Of the coin. Okay? Fine. Amar of Chasta. Says Rav Chasta. Until here we had the Machlokets between the Shakish and Rabbi Yohanan. Now comes Rav Chasta and he says, Hakol Modim. Everybody agrees. Shin Kidesh Se'ar Badam En lo takana. If they threw the blood of the korbanot on the mizbeach, and he still didn't have a haircut, and now he became tamel emet, en lo takana. There's no derech latid the yisum nezirut because once he becomes nitma, he cannot cut his hair until they come and they have the blood of the korban. Now, since there's no giluach se'ar, finishing off could be done unless it's a nazir tahor, and you can't do the seder tiglachat right until he becomes pure. So therefore, now what does he do basically? He cannot bring another korban. So now he has a big problem now. Because basically he became tamemet in a scenario, like in between, where he cannot do anything now. So now he's a big problem. Meaning if it was done before, okay, so he could bring a new korban, wait until he becomes tahor. But he can't bring a new korban. They already brought the korban, they sprinkled it. And right now he cannot do anything else. So how did, they cannot cut his hair unless he's tahor. Now he's not tahor though. So what? He's, he's in limbo. He's in the middle land. <coughs> so says the Gemara, Aliba Deman. Who does this go like? If it's going according to Rabbi Yezer, Kevin Damar Tiglachat Me'akevet, since he says that the Tiglachat is going to be Me'akev, Toch Melot, he, it's considered Toch Melot, right? Which means in the middle, will he store and it should be Soter. Ella, but rather Aliba the Rabbanan, it's going according to the Rabbis. Ha'amli, they said Tiglachat is not Me'akevet. So says the Gemara, Leolam Aliba de Rabbanan. Really, we're talking about Aliba de Rabbanan. Umayin lo takana, what does it mean that he doesn't have a takana? En lo takana le mitzvah giluach. You don't have takana for the mitzvah of giluach. Right? What, that's what it means. That means the ikar mitzvah giluach should be done when you finish the nezirut, it's only when the nezirut tahor. And therefore, right now, he can't do that. Right? But since the korban only helps when he finishes, so it comes out that he already finished it without the mitzvah giluach. Right? So therefore, you can't do it. So, Amr of Yosef Rukhanina, said Yosef Rukhanina, Nazid shekalu lo liyamav, lokea la tumah. Do you know that a Nazid, even if he finished his Nizirut, but he didn't bring his Korban, he still gets lashes on the tumah. Meaning a person could come and say, you know what, I finished my Nizirut. So now what happens? He's going to become a Tamemet. So one second, but you didn't bring the Korban. If you didn't bring your Korban, boom, we give you lashes. But don't think that you could come and become a Tamemet. Until you don't finish, you're still in the middle of Nizirut. But you don't get malkot on tiglachat, or if you went and you cut your hair, or ala yain, or drinking wine. And you see from here that the tamem met is worse, it's more strict than the wine and the taking a haircut. Okay? 
what is the reasoning why by Tuma you get lashes? The Amar Kabbalah says the pasuk, "Kol yemei azilu l'Hashem l'rabot yamim shalacham melot ki yamim shalifne melot." Because when it says "Kol yemei azilu l'Hashem," all the days of nezilu to Hashem, it's coming to include the days which are after melot, after that He's filling it up, like the days which are going to be before. Yehak yev so atigla achan amin mechayev. He should also be mechayev. So the Amar Achman of the Torah says, "Kol yemei neder nizro tar lo yavor rosho." It's going to make the, the days which are going to be after the Melot, just like the days which are going to be before the Melot. The two and furthermore, it's to do with like the Malkut of the of the Yain, which means that since the Psukim of the Yisure Nazir, when it says Kol Yemei, you cannot come and say that this is going to be talking about the Mekor Miuchad, which is going to be the obligation of Yisur Tomah. So therefore, <clears throat> the question is, what's the mekor that there's a difference between tumat met and wine and tiglachat? Remember, tumat met, you get lashes. Wine and tiglachat, tiglachat is the hair cutting, you don't get lashes. Where's the mekor? Where's the source of such halacha? So we're going to get to the Mishnah. So it says the Gemara Shaniacha, it's different over here, Tidvav Mudalef 15 Says the, the Gemara Shaniacha, it's different over here, the Manachman and the Torah says, What does it mean, Timej Rosh Nizro? Only the nezirut, that it's talui berosho, which means that the nezirut is only talui because he didn't cut his hair yet, which is that he's already finished everything, but he still didn't do the tiglachat. So for since it says rosh nizro, so it's only talking about isur tuma and not the other isurim, so therefore there's not going to be chayuv malkot if he actually was over on these things. So meitve, we're going to ask against this. Nazir shekalu yama, when a nazir finishes his days, asur legalech, he's not allowed to come and cut off his hair, or to drink wine, or to be met a And if he did do this, he was gilach v'shla yavim v'mimim v'mimim v'mimim. Here it's written in Furash, you get lashes on all three. Whether drinking wine, or tiglachat, cutting the hair, or being met mimim You just told me at the beginning it was only met mimim that you get lashes, everything else you don't get lashes. Here it's a bright time in Furash, that you do get lashes for every single one of them. Tiyuvta, you're right, it is a good refutation.